Iran. Officially, the Islamic Republic of Iran is a nation with a long, rich history, longer than many other nations. In the years 1978 to 1979, a massive social upheaval transformed the nation from an autocratic state led by a monarch into a brief period of great unrest and uncertainty. Many differing factions helped to bring down this oppressive government. However, by the end of 1979, it was clear that one group dominated all others, the Revolutionary Council. This Revolutionary Council set up a theocratic state that, on the surface, appeared to be more democratic, but in reality was just as autocratic and repressive as the last. Due to the oppressive nature of this regime, with everything from the news to art being censored and in some way controlled by the central state, under the threat of a variety of punishments, from exile to death. Despite this, Iranian filmmakers have managed to create one of the most interesting national cinematic scenes in the world. One of the many directors to have come out of this scene is the wonderful Jafar Panahi. He began his career working as an assistant director and making short films, and through this he managed to gain a lot of local respect. However, he achieved both national and international acclaim and recognition with his feature film debut, The White Balloon. Building on from this success, Panahi would build up a collection of extremely well-regarded films that tackled a diverse amount of topics, topics that many other Iranian filmmakers shied away from, most crucially issues surrounding the treatment of women, in Iran. Not only did he tackle issues that were not generally talked about in society, but he presented these stories in extremely interesting fourth wall smashing ways. One example that really sticks out to me is the 1997 film The Mirror. It is a film that starts out as a simple story of a girl trying to get home, but before long the actual actor playing the little girl supposedly decides she no longer wants to be in the film completely shattering the illusion of the original story, while also commenting on the real-life dangers that this girl faced trying to get home to her actual home. Not content with just tackling sensitive social issues, Panahi is also a true rule-breaker. His 2006 film, Offside, was originally pitched to the government as a film in which a group of men wanted to attend an important football match. However, once he got permission to make the film, the script was revealed to actually be about women who wanted to attend a football match something that had been officially discouraged since the regime took power in 1979. When the film was eventually released, it received international praise, but was banned in Iran. Despite growing international respect and recognition, official attitudes towards Banahi in Iran were becoming increasingly strained, mostly due to the socially challenging content of his films, as well as his flagrant disrespect for the rules, particularly inflamed during the production of Offside. Throughout his career, Panahi had several encounters with the law, but all these encounters had seen him be released after a short amount of time held by the authorities. However, in March 2010, he, his wife, and 15 other friends were arrested and detained for then unknown reasons. After a short while, everybody in the group was released, except for Panahi. Finally, after about a month in detention, it was revealed that Panahi had been arrested because he had, quote, endangered national security and had attempted to create propaganda against the state, all because he had wanted to create a documentary about protests that had occurred in Iran the previous year. After months of being held without a trial, he finally received his sentence, six years under house arrest and a 20-year ban from filmmaking. This ban was an almost total one. He was not allowed to even pick up a camera or direct people holding a camera. This decision by the authorities was met with international condemnation from a huge list of filmmakers, critics, and organizations, from Roger Ebert to Ken Loach, seeing even Amnesty International releasing an official statement. However, none of this changed the official ruling, and Panahi went into house arrest. However, in true Panahi style, he wouldn't let something as simple as official orders stop him from making something, anything. After a year of radio silence, Panahi jumped back onto the international stage when his new film, This Is Not A Film, was screened at the Cannes Film Festival. The film is basically one extended vlog, a video diary detailing the disgraced director's house arrest. Panahi himself did not pick up a film camera, but instead filmed himself and his immediate surroundings on his own iPhone, which he classed as not a real camera. Nor did he do the principal photography, all the shots that were not done on his iPhone. This was done by his friend, Mojab Mirta Masba, entirely under his own volition, never once being actually directed by Panahi. 
The film was edited by Panahi, but only after he consulted his lawyers, making sure that video editing did not fall under the ban. After a couple months of filming and editing this video diary, Panahi had the film smuggled to Cannes on a simple USB stick, hidden inside a cake, to ensure that it was not discovered by the authorities and confiscated or destroyed. The film made it to Cannes, and, like most of his other films, received international praise, and also saw Panahi suddenly becoming a figurehead for international free speech. The actual film itself, despite sounding quite boring, is actually a really interesting and fair self-reflection on life in Iran, Panahi's own life, his flaws, his films, and his dreams. And let's just say that the ending of the film is one of the most powerful statements I have ever seen put to film. Definitely worth watching. A wonderful reminder that art is crucial and that everyone has the power to influence the world in some way. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this Bloomfolk film talk about another film from around the world. This week was Iran. If you have any recommendations for films, why don't you recommend us a country or a film from a specific country from around the world? Trying to generally stay away from Western Europe and the United States, at least for a little bit. Though I will definitely love to talk about some films from those regions in future. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. Please also subscribe, share the video around, and also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Give us a little like there. Until next time, stay safe. Thanks for watching.